we had discussed about the one junction and uh, while discussing the ca uh, causality of the one junction i had not uh, explained i had not written the causal the causal pattern over here uh, i'll just uh, do that and we'll proceed thereafter um you see we were discussing about the grammar the grammar the graphical grammar of and uh, for this for the one junction uh, there are two aspects one is the power related aspect and the other is a causality related aspect uh, we have seen already how the power related aspect gives you uh, essentially this is a junction with common flow so all the bonds that are connected to this one junction uh, have the same information of flow in them so everywhere you can see that all the bonds have f the flow f and because uh, it's a power conserving uh, junction uh, you see that uh, it also becomes a an effort summing junction so you can do summation of efforts by using this junction so you can see in this case there are two bonds bringing in efforts so e1 plus e4 and there are three bonds taking out effort e2 plus e3 plus e5 and uh, because of the power conserving nature uh, you find that uh, these two sides become equal and so it's actually like a algebraic summation of uh, the efforts okay uh, there is one important aspect which i have uh, not explain to you you see the the aspect of causality it's not connected with the power it's connected rather with the information of of signals like flow and effort inputs and outputs okay so you should not mistake it uh, it's not connected with power in that sense suppose we take this uh, example uh, i'm deliberate i'm going to de delete these uh, power directions so that things become a little more clear so now we have got these bonds it doesn't matter where we are getting this power from but let us look at this now from from the point of view of causality so if we look at it from the causality point of view uh, let us say that uh, what what would be the grammar of this one junction see all the bonds should have the same flow so if more than one bond brings in the information of flow naturally there will be a contention there will be a dispute uh, the bonds may try to impose their respective flows and the grammar of the one junction will get violated so it is necessary that only one bond should bring in information of flow it could be any of these and all the other bonds should accept that information of flow now let us assume for example that we have flow coming in from this bond here okay so this is the effort receiving end this is the flow receiving end so information of flow is coming inside you see i have deliberately erased the power direction so that it doesn't confuse you with the information of causality so uh, here it means that the information of uh, flow is coming into this one junction and the information of effort is leaving this one junction uh, it, naturally because the information of flow has been decided on this one junction now all the other bonds have to accept that information of flow so their causality will be like this okay so the causality of the other bonds all the other bonds will be like this so the other bonds 
bring uh, bring in the information of efforts and only one bond brings in the information of flow okay uh, the same exactly the same argument applies also for uh, the zero junction but we have already discussed that and so uh, our discussion on the zero junction was here we saw that it is a common effort junction all the bonds connected to it have the same information of effort you see e e e e and e and uh, only one bond is therefore um, competent to bring in information of effort the other bonds have to accept that information of effort so they can bring in flow but they can't bring in effort if more than one bond brings in the information of effort then there will be a violation of causality for this uh, zero junction so the rule for a zero junction is that only one bond should bring in the information of effort okay and all the other bonds should accept it and we have also seen the uh, flow summing characteristic of the zero junction uh, through this um, conservation of power principle so this this is the aspect regarding the zero junction uh, we had also discussed about uh the i element and the variable associated with the i element uh, that is the generalized momentum <clears throat> and we saw uh the power uh, direction is placed pointing towards i and we have two options for causality we in the integral form of causality we see that the effort is brought in over here so you can uh, place the uh, bond here and uh, the the causal stroke here okay and so this is the causal stroke and uh it means it's an integral causality uh it receives the effort it integrates that effort and it determines its state which is the momentum it, we call it uh in other domains we call it generalized momentum so it could apply to any um, energy domain and then it has to produce an output that output is a function of this state which is momentum so it produces an output which is a function of momentum and for newtonian systems it is just a linear function of momentum so you can see that the flow output is actually just a linear function of the momentum so it's just a straight line this is as far as newtonian mechanics is concerned and we saw if we work out the uh, if we take the power inside and we integrate it uh, we saw that we could get the change in kinetic energy so the momentum variable is essentially associated with the change in kinetic energy hence uh, the i element is used when you want to model inertia when you want to model aspects related to kinetic energy uh, in the same way uh, we'll have a discussion in our next lecture on the c element and uh, yeah so it's not always necessary that the i element should be linear uh, here we have also taken a case where it is non linear you, for example you could have a non linear inductance okay and in that case uh, it is not going to be a linear relation but uh, all the same uh, you know now that what Uh, this stands for what this uh, element stands for and what does it do it just uh, accumulates the energy from its initial uh, time to its present time okay either accumulates or releases it back so it doesn't uh, it doesn't destroy that energy it doesn't create new energy so it just uh, it just keeps a track it's a storage element and uh, we had also discussed the causality of the r element in which uh, we had uh, 
uh, seen uh, in our earlier slides that R element could have causality in both ways. It could be uh, the causal stroke could be placed here or over here. But uh, we were discussing some exceptional cases in the last class. And uh, we saw that if we consider uh, the example of uh, uh, dry friction, where the characteristic is uh, like this. So initially, when the block is at rest, that is v is equal to 0, and force is applied on it, uh, the frictional force also will match it. And this will be the case till the point of impending motion, when motion is just going to start. And here, uh, we call it as Fs. So it's, uh, at this point of time, uh, at this point, uh, the velocity will just move away from zero. And you, here, you will have velocity not equal to zero. So if you apply any more force, okay, immediately the frictional force will drop. And then, depending upon the further characteristic, it will go like this. But the main point over here is that you can't invert this relationship okay because uh, it's a relationship um, uh, with respect to velocity and uh, when you try to invert it uh, you will not be able to invert this relationship hence in this particular for this particular phenomenon it is important that the causal stroke should be placed here because then it means that the R element, the frictional phenomena, it can receive the information of flow, but it will determine the information of effort. You can't have it the, in the reverse way, as far as this phenomenon is concerned. It is possible for linear uh, viscous friction, but not for this nonlinear um, dry friction case. Um, I think uh, we will pause here for today. And if you have any further query, uh, please let, let me know. Anyone having any doubt, please don't hesitate to ask. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Hello. Sir, we have zero junction and one junction. What can we perceive from this? Uh, see, these junctions are used for constructing models, uh, the, the graphical model. And uh, it will become clear to you as we uh, start taking examples uh, from um, maybe a couple of classes from now, we'll start with examples modeling in different energy domains. So we will um, model in, um, uh, we'll model, mo model systems in the mechanical domain, in the electrical domain, electromechanical domain, okay, um, fluid domains. Um, so things will become much more clearer to you as we proceed. Okay. So I said right now of the junctions just represent like a zero junction just represents a common effort and a one junction just represents a common flow. Yeah. Please. And so can, can we represent zero junction as zero junction with flow instead of subscript E? No, you can't do that. In that case, you'll have to use a one junction because uh, you see, uh, a zero junction is a common effort junction. Okay, okay. Uh, it is. Its grammar is like that. Uh, it's like asking whether uh, can I uh, have uh, the alphabet A representing the character F. Uh, it. We have already a system in place. We already have a set of characters. We have the alphabet in which we denote. A, this is A and this is its sound associated with it. Okay, this is what it represents. Uh, we don't say that uh, A, the A is represented as F, right? So in the same way, uh, we have zero junction and for the zero junction, the grammar is that all the bonds that are connected to it have the same information of effort. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other query?